in Russia organized a public organization, Soldiers Widows of Russia, and began to chant there the mantra about the need for mobilization. Like, our husbands weren't hiding under their skirts, they died honestly, let's mobilize the next ones. Here is a quote, we ask our president, our supreme commander-in-chief to prohibit men of conscription age to leave Russia. And we have a full moral right to do this, our husbands died defending these men as well, but who will defend us if they run? Soldiers widows of Russia, for greater mobilization. Russia, is for mobilization. This is our request, our decision, our demand. And we believe that the authorities will hear us. Here, I apologize, and it is clear to the horse's mouth that the real widows have nothing to do with this project. They are just preparing the info field and public opinion for the next wave. Somebody has to plug the holes, because the Afu has plenty of himmers. What is interesting is the increasing cultivation of death there. They say that the greatest valor is to die for the motherland, as their propagandists like to say. I'll leave one of them in some corner of the screen. You don't have to understand what she's talking about, just look at her facial expressions. And these are the kind of people who brainwash the people of Russia every day. It is not for them to go to the front, for this there are Beriats and other peoples of Empire of Evil. But the fighting Beriats are running out, so they will soon take everyone. They still cannot offer their population any ideas, so they simply suggest going to another country and dying. As happened the other day in Makivka, to kill an entire battalion at once, of course, that takes skill, and the Afu does just that. Here we cannot but pay tribute to the Russian commanders who managed to cram several hundred people into one building with ammunition and equipment, thank them very much. The numbers of liquidated occupants flicker from 100 according to the Russian version to 700 according to the Ukrainian side. This is not surprising. And it's not that no one really knows these numbers. They are not interesting. And first of all the Russians. Nobody will find out the number of the buried. The bulk of the dead and wounded are deep under the rubble. They are already squeezed by the folded floors of the building. In order to completely dismantle the ruins of the gigantic building, where the young meat, together with the equipment and ammunition, are located, it would take about 100 pieces of heavy construction equipment, several weeks, large cranes and hundreds of hands. Of course, no one is going to do that. While the press and the internet are buzzing, a couple of excavators are lazily picking at the ruins. In a few days the news will fade, and even they will be gone. Wounded, pinned down by the rubble, crushed by the debris of furniture, they will groan and sleep forever. Unmarked and uninterested bodies of the mobilized will be left to rot under concrete rubble. Soldiers meat in Russia is so cheap that there is no point in counting it. In addition, there is a centuries-old Russian army tradition, which is rigorously enforced, to abandon there. Kutuzov, retreating in panic from Borodino Field left 30,000 Russian wounded, Suvorov left about 1,000 of his miracle heroes to freeze in the Alpine snows. One can recall Putin's Kursk submarine, the train station in Grozny, and hundreds of other examples.